concludes the battle of the. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'll only say that this is where their budget went. That's where it went. All the amazing animation, quality, all that was in this episode right here in this battle. The battle between Chisato and Kurome, and of course, Rapture versus Geese. And all I have to say is this. I feel more sympathy for the bad guys. Well, bad people, you want to say, in this episode. And I guess it's because of the terrible build-up that they had for the main characters. Like, you had, so far, a tons of episodes to show how amazing and interesting these characters are, but... Even when the show is about to wrap up, I feel like I barely know any of them. When it comes to Mie, Tamara, all of them. Um, I know a lot about Asuka. Of course, she's the main character. But even then, it's just moodiness, PTSD, and stuff like that. It's just repetitive behavior. However, one of the Magical Five girls I do like and start to appreciate. I thought Tamara was cool, but she don't have enough development for me to really get interested in her. Korome. She is the freaky one, but her freakiness is justified. When she's living in a world where everybody else hates her or bullied her, and she was just everyone's sandbag, punching bag, stabbing stone, whatever you want to call it. It showed how she did want to go back to what she was before. She realized that, in a way, she is a weak kind of person. But even a weak person themselves can become strong. Just by effort and determination. After all, there's different types of strength in this world. And there's also different types of weaknesses in this world. You can't only go by one. When people think of strong, they think of someone who's just, you know, unbeatable. They're great with strength. They're brave, and that's it. That's what strong is, will. But there's a different kind of strength. And I learned that from Hunter x Hunter back in the day. And it also applies in this episode. She's a toe in a way. She just wanted a purpose. To be happy again. She got her parent, her mom, murder. She's able to walk, and she feels useful. But even then, her losing was just, you know... I, I didn't want her to lose. I didn't want her to lose. But it had to happen because so get a story rolling. Or yet again, she could have won and something could have happened. But, yeah, whatever. Then the battle between Geese and Asuka. That was a pretty interesting one, too. It wasn't just this sheer over-dominant power that was going on. It was actually some technical stuff going on. Hell, even um the little fairy thing was kicking some ass, shooting some goblin ass. That was pretty cool. And then finally, um, taking down Geese was just had to take down his magical fluid, the circling his body, well, the armor. And when they finally did that, all that's left was just a torso, a head, a torso, and an arm. That's it. That's all that's left of him. And so he really, he, you could tell he went through hell. In a world where not everyone can be saved, some people will go on the bad side. A lot of us will think, why would people do this thing? What made this person become like this? What steps did this person have to walk in order to get to this state right here? And that's a giant, giant um, variable right there. Constants and variables. Um, even though the girls were fighting off a war, I said this in, the, in Goblin Slayer, where the heroes are all fighting the giant monsters, the demon lords, and all that. Back at home, the others aren't completely safe. They still can be hurt, they can be killed and harassed by other people within their own home. And that's exactly what happened. The kids in Guy's Village saw the natural girls as heroes. That, hey, maybe they're fighting these monsters, maybe they can come save them. That's not how it is. They go where the government tells them to go. And because of that, of course, the kids would suffer. And to this very day, in reality, it's like that when it comes to war. You know, the bystanders, the people that are forgotten, left behind. It happens. It really does. And it sucks, but 
we can't save everyone. Because we can't save everyone, unfortunately, there are people who turn into the bad side. They become terrorists. They become active shooters. They do this stuff. And that's all I gotta say on that topic. Uh, things wrapped up nice in a little bow here. It wasn't, it's not the final episode. I don't think it's the final episode. But however, they did accomplish their mission, though, the bad guys. It wasn't to kill Tabra. It wasn't to destroy the base. It was just to get that magical tool within the box and get it delivered to the queen. And that is it. That's all they had to do. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. And they achieved that. So even though Geese and Chisato lost their battle, they won that side of the war. Well, you could still say they, they lost their matches, but they won the battle. They had won the war, but they lost, they lost their matches. That's it. And how Geese... Was Geese really lying at the end? Where he said, no, we were spying the entire time. It could be possible, that is. But could he just say at the end so she would hate him and just move on her life like okay because if geese were just to die like that she would probably resent everybody else and try to go out there like give up on life or go rampage and try to kill that could have happened or because what geese said she'll probably hate that she'll have to reconstruct herself especially her mental state right now and because of that who knows will this be the end of her i don't think so you know if, there would be, if this was the end of her, they would have killed her off by now, after that. But now they kept her alive. So more than likely, we'll see her again. Will she be on the Magical Girl team? Who knows? There's a giant possibility. You know, she is still seeking purpose, and she's still broken and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. Now, finally, final thoughts on this. Um, the Queen said that this magical item is not for anyone in the Magical Five, but for somebody else. And right there, they showed Sayako. I know it's not Nozomi. <sighs> I, I hope it's not Nozomi. I just don't like Nozomi. I'm sorry. But I bet it's Sayako. And by the way, for on the final thing I want to say today, where is the Chinese girl? Is she going to show up last episode or something? I don't know. Just, just, just don't have her in the opening if you're not going to have her in the show. Just saying. So anyways, this is all I got for this video. Um, it was a very straightforward episode. Like I said, a lot of episodes this week have been straightforward. Like, not much happens, but it's just in one spot area. So, not much to really talk about and break down, in my opinion, anyways. So, yeah. That's all I got for this. And as you can tell, I'm not very enthusiastic about reviewing the show. I don't know. It just feels like it just dropped in quality, you know? It's just, ugh, to me. Like, it, it could have been better. That's all I'm saying. It could have been better. So anyways, that's what I got for this video. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mad Crown, out.